think I pretty much knew that I was destined to be a creative person all my life, <laughs> particularly when I was failing at mathematics. Actually figuring out what that field would be took me a long time. I couldn't particularly find an area of the visual arts that I wanted to participate in, that I wanted to spend my life doing. I loved painting, I loved fabric, I loved batik and screen printing and things like that, but I just, I couldn't, I never settled with it. You know, I sort of popped like a frog from one leaf to the next to the next. My first proper job out of university was as a junior reporter at TTT. And that's where I discovered television. And um, I loved it. I loved the directness. I loved the combination of the technical and the creative, of the ability to tell stories visually, to get a point across in, in actually quite a direct way. The spirit of collaboration that's required for filmmaking. I really loved all of that. And so I suppose by the time I hit my late 20s, I kind of had figured out, okay, Television is what I want to be doing. Um, making films, making television shows, this is what I want to be doing. When I left TTT, I actually, there wasn't a whole lot of production going on in Trinidad at the time outside of music videos and television commercials. I made a decision to make my own television show. <laughs> I made this television show called Sankosh, which was a cooking and lifestyle program, and I did that for six years. Um, I produced almost 100 episodes. In around 2005, 2006, I did my first documentary series, which was uh, called Make and Mass with Brian McFarlane, which was commissioned by TV6. And I kind of, I don't know, sort of was forever changed after that. I kind of realized that that was really, really what I wanted to do and I wrapped up Sankosh in 2008 so that I could focus almost completely on documentary filmmaking. In a place like Trinidad where so few uh, documentaries that tell our stories actually exist, uh, there's many, many documentaries that need to be made and many stories that need to be told. So. I have this kind of antenna which are up and, and active at all times thinking, right, I want to do a film on that, I want to do a film on that, I want to... Right, and so what takes it from this idea, I want to do a film on that, I want to do a film on that, you know, to something that I'm actually going to work on and invest my time and energy in and try and fundraise for, um, is a couple of things. One, it stays. It doesn't just disappear. It doesn't go, oh, I want to work on that, and then a week later I forgot me either. It stays, and I think about it, and it keeps coming up. It keeps coming up in my mind, in my quiet times, and in my life. I'll see things, and I'll, you know, be out in the world living my life, and I'll see something, and I'll go, oh, I could use that. Or, oh, look at that. That's a great location to shoot this. Or so that. In my mind, I'm sort of building the world around this idea that I have, right? I also write a very kind of succinct idea for how it's going to look, how it's going to, what kind of thing I'm trying to see in the documentary. What's the point of view of the documentary? A very important step for me is working out a budget. It's not something that young filmmakers probably think about. But because this is not a hobby for me, because this is what I do and this is how I earn a living, I've got to be able to raise the money for it. And I've got to, it, so it's got to be tenable. I try not to spend too much time in that very preliminary stage doing research because um, there's no guarantee that I'm going to raise the money. And then I just pull my team together around me. Once I know that it's going to happen, I build a small team and we get to work. Working creatively is the hardest thing for me personally. So when I have to make something for someone else, oh, I could do that in two seconds for that. Yeah, let me do that for you. I'll do that for you, sure. You know, I can spend hours doing things for other people. But when I have to make it for myself, it's hard. I'm not afraid of it. I just know that it's going to be hard. And so it takes me time to convince myself and to prepare myself 
to do something hard. I mean, I'm a massive procrastinator. I make 22 cups of tea, I walk around, I vacuum the studio, I, you know, wipe things down, I clean uh, my desk, I'll check emails, I'll do any piece of admin I could possibly do to get away from this. <laughs> and then at a certain point, I'll just say, God damn it, I have to start. And, and once I've started, that's it. I've started and I will continue. I'm kind of unrelenting um, when it comes to that. But starting is probably the hardest thing. Yeah. It's nice when people like what you do and appreciate what you do. And it's nice to know that you can have an impact, but you can't trust that that is going to happen. And that cannot be the only reason that you do the thing that you do. If you're gonna work for yourself, and if you're going to work in a creative field like filmmaking is, uh, you better get used to rejection. With unfinished sentences, I cannot tell you how many grants I have applied for and not gotten over the entire period I've been making this film. And I just knew it was one of those things that never, I tried, I tried to give it time so it would just go away, but it never did, it never went away. And I knew I had to make it. I knew it would be difficult to fundraise for. I also knew it would be very important for me and a good film and something I would be proud of. If I'm passionate about something, I will do whatever I can to make it, make it. It's taken me a long time to reach this place where I um, I don't feel devastated by rejection. I mean, I definitely have had some really serious um, moments of despair having experienced a rejection of one of one kind or another in terms of my life as a filmmaker um, where you know you wonder why you're doing this and 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 you and not in a sort of glob way but in a serious soul searching why am I doing this who cares what does it matter um, you know how will I pick myself up from this and you just have to take time. It just takes time. It takes time and it passes through your system and you let it go and you get up and you go again. Everybody has their own opinion about whether something is good or not. The most important thing in that moment is that I know that I tried my very, very best and this is the best that I could do. And then what happens when it goes out into the world is really beyond my control. All I can do is try and make something well. And just to know that this is what I'm supposed to do. So, you know, frankly, if I don't get into that festival tomorrow, I'm still gonna get up the next day and do what I do, you know? When I can tell stories about our Caribbean experience that aren't known um, or that help us understand a bit about who we are in a way that is thorough and respectful and well done. I feel very, very, very proud. That, that's what keeps me going. I love what I do. And I'm making things and putting them out into the world. And I, I don't know, I think that matters. Hi, I'm Marielle Brown and in a big box of crayons, I would be different colors for different days. Today, I'm thinking I would be like pink because I'm feeling pretty rosy. <laughs> uh, 